Good morning, welcome back to the channel. And so for this, this episode, we've traveled over to the East Coast. We're uh, staying in a place called, I think it's North Somercoats. Um, and we're just around the corner from Donanook. Now, for those of you who know what Donanook is, you'll know exactly why we're here. For those of you who are now thinking Donanook, never heard of that before. Well, this is one of the best places in the country to come and see the grey seals pupping um, during this time of year. It starts right at the beginning, early November, and it kind of rumbles on all the way through um, towards January. We've been here uh, on the 1st of January actually in the past and had an equally fantastic day, so I would recommend it at any time. The beauty of coming at this time of the year is there's a slight chance that you might see some of the, uh, the seals giving birth. And we actually saw that last night. So we arrived last night. Uh, by the time we got here, we only probably had about an hour of sunlight left. So I left the vlogging kit in the car and just took the camera. Um, so I'll pop on the video now. Some of the things that we got from last night. So as you can see, absolutely fantastic experience last night. Um, it was really quite busy when we arrived, but by the time we left, it was there was very few people there. Um, so a, an incredible experience. And and what we tend to find is that the seals do tend to um, they do tend to give birth during the evening into the morning, so through the night. So getting there late at night or early in the morning is definitely worthwhile. So we're staying at a guest house. Um, I'll put the details of that um, in in the description below beautiful guest house thoroughly recommend it just had breakfast which was absolutely beautiful and my intention was to get up this morning go down to Donanook early spend a, uh, an hour there come back get breakfast and then go down 
um, f for a second a second shot at it. But when we opened up the curtains this morning, I don't know whether you can see over my shoulder, there's a, thi a thick sea fog that's rolled in. So there wasn't really any point going down early because it was that first morning golden light that I was looking for. Um, but we're going to head off down there now anyway, uh, see what we can see. So come along for the journey and enjoy it with us. So um, thinking about photography, that's what this channel is all about. What kind of equipment do you think would be ideal for Don and Nook? Now, a lot of people fall into the trap of thinking um, it'd be really good to bring um, a really sh short focal length because actually they're right next to the fence. The problem with that is you can't really photograph through the fence and you can't lean over because it's like double fenced to be able to get down low enough to take the, the shots of, of the seal. You can do it. So if you're limited with the equipment that you've got, I, I would suggest that that's probably better than nothing. But uh, I still think the longer focal lengths are what you need when you come to Donanook. If you go to Horsey Gap, um, you certainly uh, it's a different experience there you can lie down on in the sand dunes I would still recommend a long focal length because it keeps you away from the seals the beauty of Donanook is there's that fence so you can be 12 inches away from from a seal and it'd be completely fine but there's wardens that walk all up and down and they keep the, the seals safe at Halsey Gap there isn't that so that you know that you have to keep your distance from them um, so long focal lens is definitely the way forward. I've got my uh, Z9 and my 500mm lens. Um, I've got that on my tripod, Gitzel, uh, Gitzel uh, Gimbal Head uh, Series 5 tripod. Um, and that just allows it to take the weight and allows me to shoot longer. I could do handhold. Um, I could rest it on top of the fence. There's those opportunities here. So if you don't have the tripod, you can definitely do that. So let's go. As you can see, I'm going to turn the camera around now. It's proper foggy. Um, it's thick fog. So I'm not quite sure what we're going to get in terms of opportunities for photography. I certainly got some nice shots last night, so I'm not, I'm not overly disappointed. There's, a, there's always that hint of disappointment when you turn up and the weather's not how you want it to be. But um, sometimes when the weather turns up like this, it throws up a photograph that's, that's different from everything else. So it's definitely worth the shot. So what you can see, or probably most likely here, is we've got behind us is, the, at the moment, I think the last count, they do a count and they publish it every Sunday. So the last Sunday, I think we we're at about 270 seal pups. Um, it will get much, much higher than that. It will get probably nearer to the thousand point, I think, at, it, at its peak. Um, but if you come early, then you've got the more chance of seeing the births. Whereas you come later in the season, there's more seals and they become a bit fatter and a bit cuter, but you, you don't get the opportunity of, of, seeing, of seeing the births. Um, and then it's just a case really of um, walking up and down the, the, the footpath and finding your subjects um, and looking for opportunities where your subjects are isolated or um, elevated because there is an elevated bank um, that they kind of climb up through the, through the grass. So find your subject, find your composition, and then you can take your time because they're not going anywhere. They're there for a long period of time. So you can really take your time with this kind of wildlife photography. It's not like birds in flight where it's, you know, a dash to try and get the image as quickly as you can. You really can take your opportunities.
Okay, so I'm just going to talk about settings for a moment. Um, so for settings for photographing um, seals like this, <clears throat> I, I tend to um, use a fairly slow shutter speed, particularly while we're <laughs> particularly while we're limited with light as we are this morning. So I might go all the way down to two hundredth of a second, um, particularly if, if they're if they're quite static. Um, I probably don't push it much more than a 500th of a second unless I'm photographing uh, some of the bulls fighting then I'll push that right the way up to a thousandth of a second. Aperture, um, I, I experiment a little bit with this. You have to remember they're quite a big animal so if they are kind of horizontal to you you can afford quite a shallow depth of field so a wide open aperture. Um, if they're coming towards you and you want to get as much of the, the animal in, in focus as possible then I might go all the way up to f11 um, just to kind of increase that depth of field but it's just really a case of experimentation with that and then I leave ISO on auto but I just keep my eye on it and sometimes I'll slow my shutter speed when I'm using a narrow aperture just to keep that ISO down um, so but as I said before you know you can experiment because they're not going anywhere say you can get close to them um, this seal has not long been born the afterbirth is just away over there and I'm going to flip the camera on and just show you how close you really are It really just doesn't get much better than that. And if you want to bring children to see wildlife, Donanook is exceptional for that. The very fact that you can be this close, you can hear the mother breathing, um, just means that the children get that very intimate experience with, with a beautiful little creature like that. So I've decided to call it a day, um, as you can imagine and, and, and you probably see, uh, that it's got very busy now, very, very busy and the mist never lifted. I thought the mist would lift um, as the day went on and, and the sun might burn it off but it just hasn't so the light's exceptionally flat, um, really no need to drive as fast as that is the um, the light's exceptionally flat and I got the better light last night and when I've just been looking at some of the pictures on the back of the camera compared to the, the pictures I were getting last night there's no comparison so I think I think we'll call it a day it's certainly been a fa fantastic visit and if you've not been to Donanook you need to get yourself here and have a look it's an incredible place and a real real uh, wildlife experience to be that close to newborn pups and to see pups being born so until next time Ta-da!